It's the greatest sporting competition in the world. The stage for some of the most gifted sportsmen on the planet, the FIFA World Cup. It's the desire of every footballer to score a goal in the World Cup finals. Some of the most eye-catching and dramatic goals in the competition's history have been extraordinary long-range efforts. So strong is the footballer's desire to try his luck from distance that there is a glut of goals that confound the best efforts of goalkeepers. As footballs, boots and even players become more technically advanced, the task for keepers keeps getting harder. But from the early days of World Cup competition right up to modern day, a great blaster is what the game's all about. Debate has always raged as to which goals are the best of the bunch. Now it's time to clear the argument up once and for all. What a way to start proceedings. Here are the greatest blasters in FIFA World Cup history. Our list of famous firsts begins in 1938. This was the year that Vittorio Pozzo became the first and only coach to win two consecutive FIFA World Cups. In 1934, Pozzo led his Italian team to victory over Czechoslovakia and four years later triumphed over Hungary. In 1938, the Dutch East Indies became the first Asian country to appear in the finals. The curious mascot didn't help much either as they lost 6-0 to Hungary. 
In fact, Asia had to wait until 1966 to record their first World Cup win. North Korea achieved the milestone when they beat Italy 1-0 in one of the greatest upsets of all time. The first African nation to play in a World Cup was Egypt in 1934, but the continent had to wait another 44 years for its first win. Tunisia beat Mexico 3-1 and for good measure drew with the holders West Germany nil all. In 1974, Scotland became the first country to be eliminated from the finals without losing a match. In a tricky group, the Scots drew 0-0 with Brazil and 1-1 with Yugoslavia. A 2-0 win against Zaire fell short of their target and Scotland went out as a result of an inferior goal difference. In 1966, Antonio Carbajal became the first goalkeeper to compete in five consecutive FIFA World Cups. He made his debut in 1950 and bowed out at the finals in England. Carbajal played 48 times for his country and remains a legend within the history of the competition. The 1970 FIFA World Cup in Mexico was the first time substitutes were used and Juan Basaguren, playing for the tournament host, became the first substitute to score. In a group game against El Salvador, Basaguren took five minutes to make his mark. Mexico won 4-0, and El Salvador finished bottom of their group without a point. Whilst we fast forward 12 years to Spain 82, El Salvador had their finger on rewind. Yet again, they failed to make an impression and suffered a 10-1 hammering by Hungary. It was in this match that Laszlo Kish became the first substitute to score a hat trick. And Mora does well, but now this must open up the chance for Laszlo Kish to The first tournament to be broadcast in Technicolor was Mexico 70, and so all the more reason for FIFA to introduce yellow and red cards. The first yellow card was shown to Yevgeny Lovchev of the Soviet Union, but spectators had to wait a further four years to see red. Chile's Carlos Caselli was awarded the honour when the referee gave him his marching orders in the match against West Germany. An opponent of dictator Pinochet, Caselli was later expelled from playing football in his country. The 1986 FIFA World Cup saw the first sending off of a coach, and that was Paraguay's Cayetano Ray. He was ordered from the dugout in his team's match against Belgium. Ray was dismissed for repeatedly standing too close to the pitch. In 1978, Holland's Dick Nanninga became the first substitute to be sent off, seven minutes after coming on against West Germany. He and Holzerbein clashed as the Dutch took a free kick. Nanninga was shown the yellow card. He was then reported to have laughed at the ref's decision. Confusion reigned as he was ordered off. To date, a total of 114 players have been sent off, but only one goalkeeper. That was Italy's Gianluca Pagliuca against Norway in 1994. Italy made the final against Brazil, the first to be decided on a penalty shootout and lost. In fact, Italy have lost all three of the World Cup penalty shootouts, so no surprise that Antonio Cabrini became the first player to miss a penalty in a final against West Germany in 1982. And finally, Brazil have had plenty of famous firsts. Vava became the first player to score in consecutive finals in 1958 and 1962. Mario Zagello became the first person to play in and manage a World Cup winning side. He won in 1958 and 62 as a player and in 1970 as a coach. In fact, 1970 was a very special tournament for Brazil. Jairzinho became the first player to score in every round of a World Cup tournament, including the final. Pele became the first player to win three World Cups and Brazil were the first country to win the trophy outright, courtesy of those triumphs.
FIFA was founded at Rue Saint-Honoré in Paris on the 21st of May 1904. Formerly the headquarters of the French Sports Union, if you go to that address now, you'll find a shoe shop. There is nothing better than when two great football nations meet to play for the highest stakes in the game. These eagerly awaited encounters are truly worthy of the title Clash of the Titans. First up, an epic encounter on a warm July evening in Turin. England v Germany for a place in the FIFA World Cup final. After a goalless first half, it took a large slice of fortune to break the deadlock. A wicked deflection off Paul Parker from Andy Bremer's free kick was enough to beat Shilton and put the Germans ahead. With ten minutes to go, Parker whipped in a cross that left three German defenders facing the wrong way long enough for Lineker to equalise. The goal put England into extra time for the third successive game. There were missed chances, great saves and, most famous of all, the tears of a clown. Paul Gascoigne's rash challenge on Berthold earning him a yellow card and suspension should England make the final. His disappointment and disbelief turned the rising star into a national icon. The nightmare of penalties. Unlike their opponents, the Germans had been in this situation twice before and won on both occasions. Pierce missed, so at 4-3 to Germany, Waddle had to score. The ball sailed over the bar and with it, England's dream of reaching the final. Germany were there for a record sixth occasion. 1970 and another exciting semi-final involving the Germans. They faced Italy, who went to goal up after eight minutes through Boninsegna. Italy decided to shut up shop. The Germans, though, were very much open for business, Schnellinger making it one all on 90 minutes. Into extra time, and like Captain Beckenbauer playing with a dislocated shoulder, the Germans fought on gamely, Gerd Muller putting them in front with a typical poacher's effort. But that was far from the killer blow. Four minutes later, Bergnitz scored just the second goal of his career for Italy, 2-2. Striker Luigi Riva, who had been disappointing right up to the quarters, came to life when it mattered most, putting Italy in front in fine style. Back came the Germans, Muller headed past a static Gianni Rivera on the far post, 3 all. The pursuit of redemption is at the heart of all great dramas. Rivera found his just a minute later with a calm finish to score the winner. Nineteen eighty-two. Brazil had, for many, assembled the finest team ever to travel to a FIFA World Cup. Needing just a point against Italy to secure a place in the semis, they fell behind to a Paulo Rossi goal. It was just a matter of minutes before Brazil were levelled through their rangy and powerful captain, Socrates. Italy, though, hit back, the 26-year-old Rossi with his second. Surely, though, this Brazil side was too good for any opposition. Falcao took aim before smashing the ball past a helpless Dino Zoff. But on 74 minutes came the decisive moment of the tournament. Rossi's hat-trick goal made him a national hero. Italy went on to become champions. Brazil, brilliant, but beaten. Brazilian football, though, is synonymous with FIFA World Cup success. Their first coming in 1958. The semi-final against a strong France was a key game. Vava opened the scoring on just two minutes, Just Fontaine equalising after eight. That was the first time Brazil had conceded at this tournament and it shook them to life. This, though, will be remembered as the game when Pelé truly marked his arrival on the world stage. Aided and abetted by wing legend Garincha, who was allowed to run riot, Pelé's second-half hat-trick put the game out of France's reach.
Piantoni pulled a lovely goal back, but this was Brazil's game. The fans had seen something very special indeed. When the biggest prize in sport is at stake, controversy is never far away. Ali Benazur is one man who can vouch for that. The Tunisian referee was in charge of the 1986 quarter-final between England and Argentina, and he'll always be remembered as the man who failed to spot Diego's handiwork. We saw the handball straight away. As soon as he did it, we don't know how the referee missed it. And we knew it was a handball. So, what do you do when someone points the finger of blame at you? Well, you pointed at someone else, of course. In this case, at his Bulgarian assistant. For him, it was clearly a goal and not handball. My assistant indicated to me that there was no foul play, so I was obliged to give the goal. Maradona infamously called it the hand of God. Proof that God is ambidextrous came four years later. Maradona with his right hand this time to deny the Soviets. Argentina won the game and qualified ahead of, you've guessed it, the Soviet Union. Talking of penalties that never were, then how about this second round effort between Belgium and Germany at USA 94? Swiss referee Kurt Rottlesberger was later sent home, and the Belgians had to pack their bags too. Germany won the match 3-2. In 2002, and more second round heartbreak for the Belgians. Robert Vassave said his team could have beaten Brazil if they had not had a seemingly valid goal disallowed at 0 0. They went on to lose. Brazil hasn't always had the run of the refereeing decisions. At the 78 finals, Welsh ref Clive Thomas blew for time just as Zico headed in from a corner. Thomas denied Zico the goal. The game finished 1 1 and it cost Brazil top spot in their group. Italy lifted the trophy in 1982, but it could have been a different story. Austrian referee Franz Vorer disallowed Roger Miller's goal in Cameroon's 0-0 draw with Peru during the group stages. Offside was the call, although a rather disgruntled Miller seemed not to be. Italy progressed to the second round ahead of Cameroon and goal scored. But like we said, it could have been a totally different story. If 1982 was lucky for the Italians, 2002 was anything but. In all, Italy had five goals disallowed during the competition. The most controversial, the second round golden goal from Tomasi against Coho, South Korea. Cameras show Tomasi onside. Later in the match, Toddy was sent sprawling in the area. Penalty? Wouldn't you agree? Well, referee didn't. He saw it as a dive and showed Toddy his second yellow card. It was all too much for Giovanni Trapattoni. South Korea went on to win. And so the South Koreans moved into a quarterfinal date with Spain. First, the Spanish had this goal disallowed, but worse was to follow. This would have been a golden goal winner for Morientes, had the assistant referee not flagged for the ball going out of play. Spain lost on penalties. Watch the top left of the picture. Brazil star of the tournament, Garincha, lashes out Arrojas of Chile during their semi-final encounter. It's brought to the attention of the referee, who rightly sends Garincha from the field of play. So why was Garincha later cleared to play in the final against Czechoslovakia? I guess we'll never know.
It's a lonely old life. Especially when they say you're a bit different from the rest. But you often represent everybody's last hope. So who has the safest hands in football? Well, a few goalkeepers have staked their claim on the greatest stage of all. We start with Aldo Olivieri, the Black Spider. Olivieri was the unlikely hero of Italy's 1938 World Cup success. He'd recovered from a fractured skull earlier in his career to prove an inspiration during the tournament. Once described as a kamikaze pilot, at a time when scoring goals seemed infinitely more important than stopping them, Olivieri conceded just five goals in four games as the Azzurri took the title. Amazingly, Olivieri wasn't the meanest goalkeeper at that World Cup. Frantisek Planicka of Czechoslovakia only let in one goal. He also played on despite breaking his arm in the bruising encounter with Brazil. For many, the best keeper of the pre-war years. Q 1958 and Q the Harry Gregg story. A survivor of the Munich air crash just four months before the World Cup started, Greg somehow managed to find it within him to propel Northern Ireland to the quarter-finals. That Greg was voted best keeper of the tournament is testament to both his skill and courage. Virtues, of course, which apply to Lev Yashin. Is there a man who has had more impact on the modern game than Yashin? It was in 1958 too that Lev, meaning lion in Russian, made his mark. And what a mark. A keeper of great elasticity, Yashin was magnificent for the Soviet Union. The first goalkeeper to be named European Player of the Year back in 1963, Yashin is quite simply a legend, his name a benchmark for success. Want to travel to meet a goalkeeping legend? Then you could do a lot worse than go to Mexico. It's there that you'll find a man with a unique place in FIFA World Cup history. Antonio Carbajal, you see, has played in a record five World Cups, from 1950 till 1966, before he took his international bow on the hallowed turf of Wembley. I think it's better to retire sooner rather than later, so that you don't embarrass yourself. That would be sad. It's nice for the fans and the press to say, we remember how good you were, and not to say, look at you now. Proof indeed that good goalkeepers live on and on. Always. If Antonio Carbajal's legacy is defined over 16 years, then another man's is defined by a single moment in time. The greatest save of all time? We'll let you be the judge of that. Gordon Banks is an England legend. Whilst Banks was winning the World Cup in 66, a young goalkeeper called Sepp Meyer was in the German squad. Four years later and he was number one choice and becoming the best keeper in the world. Nicknamed the Anzing Cat, Meyer was German player of the year three times. The pinnacle of his career came in 1974. Having won the European Cup with Bayern Munich, Meyer was then inspirational in denying Holland as Germany won the FIFA World Cup. Meyer's mantle was handed over seamlessly to Dino Zoff. His career reads like an honours degree. He played for Italy 112 times. He holds the record for the most time spent without conceding an international goal, 1,142 minutes, and became the oldest player to win the World Cup when in 1982, he lifted the trophy as captain of Italy, aged 40. Incidentally, the only goalkeeper to do so. Since Zoff's retirement, a number of keepers have vied for the position of world number one. 
Peter Shilton of England, star of three FIFA World Cups and once went four World Cup matches without conceding a goal. Thomas Nkono, the first black African goalkeeper to gain prominence, extremely agile, very unflappable. Harold Schumacher, Germany's goalkeeper throughout the 80s, imposing, tough and nerveless. Andoni Zubazareta, over a century of international appearances and four FIFA World Cups, a Spanish legend. Walter Zenga, the Spider-Man, 38 clean sheets in 58 games for Italy, so close to a winner's medal at Italia 90. And Claudio Taffarel, who can forget his heroics which helped Brazil win the FIFA World Cup after a 24-year loan period. The new breed is pretty special too, the new goalkeepers of the 21st century. But from this bunch, there's one man who has stood out. Oliver Kahn. Nurtured by Sepp Meyer, Kahn has become arguably the best goalkeeper the world has ever seen. Organised, agile, great positional sense, wonderful reflexes, he's got it all. The best player of the 2002 FIFA World Cup, Kahn is the one they all look to emulate. The art of goalkeeping is in safe hands. In 1904, FIFA's Foundation Act was signed by just seven nations. The governing body has come a long way since. Currently, there are 204 member associations. Preparing for the FIFA Women's World Cup is a very serious business indeed. This is the USA, perhaps the greatest team of women's footballers in history, relaxing before a key encounter with arch rivals Germany, the pretenders to their crown. The 2003 FIFA Women's World Cup semi-final, Germany versus the USA, claimed to be the best ever game in women's football. Quick, competitive, tactical, exciting. Germany had taken an early lead. USA pressed relentlessly. Then Germany came back. And in the end, finished the stronger. Germany won 3-0, but it was a showpiece for the women's game between the two top teams. 